Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we continued working on adding in player input functionality to our battle menu, and we added in a cursor game object to allow a player to navigate around the menu, and then we could show them what they're selecting. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. All right, so now that we have part, most of our menu functionality working, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some additional functionality to display dialogue to the player when they select one of our options. Uh, so as an example, if we click on the switch menu here, we display some text about not be able to switch their monsters. And then like if they choose an attack, we'll say, hey, we're attacking your enemy. And this is going to be the building block for us to actually start adding in the functionality to build up the full battle system. Because uh, as you imagine, uh, as different things are happening, we're gonna display text to the player to let them know what is currently happening in the battle. Um, and so for the time being, we're gonna add some placeholder text for some of our menu items, such as using items or switching to another monster, uh, just so it kind of looks like we're starting to add functionality. And then, then we'll add these features at a later time. All right, so to get started, what we're going to do is we're gonna update some of our logic tied to when we handle our player input. Uh, so right now in our handle player input, uh, we just have some basic checks if the OK or the back button was pressed. And if they are, we're toggling our menus. But what we'd really want to do is if the player is on the main screen and they hit the back button, nothing will happen. But if they are in the fight sub menu or if they're in like the item and they're looking at their bags, if they hit back, we want to go back to our main menu. Versus if we hit the OK button, this will have different context depending on where we're at. So if we're on the main screen and we hit OK, we would then navigate to another uh, sub menu. Uh, so as an example, if I hit OK and I'm on fight, if I select fight, I'm now in the fight menu. If I hit OK, I got to do something differently. Uh, versus if I click on item and I hit OK, we would want to go into the item menu. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and refactor uh, our logic here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a brand new method, um, basically for switching back to our main battle menu, because that's going to be something we're going to do um, from a variety of our menus. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and come down to the bottom of our class. So we'll add in our new method, we'll do switch to main battle menu and so this will just be a private method and so what we're going to do is we'll hide our monster attack sub menu and then show the main battle menu and then what we'll do is we're just going to copy these two lines of code and we'll paste them down in our method and then what we'll do is from our cancel we're going to go ahead and call that new method <clears throat> All right, so then when we handle the uh, OK button, uh, what we want to do is we'll have to check which menu we're actually in and then uh, do different things. So uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to add some if statements. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our active battle menu if it's equal to our main menu here. And I'm just going to put a to do for us to come back to that. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and return early uh, if we run that code. And then what we'll do is we're going to check to see if we are in the attack selection. So if we do our battle move select, we'll add it to do. And then we'll just have another return statement. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get rid of these two lines of code here. All right, so now when we are on our main battle menu here, what we're gonna have to do is see what option the player selected and then do different things. So to do that, we're gonna make a new method. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we'll replace our to-do, which we're gonna do this, and we're gonna call it handle, player, choose, main, battle option. And then what we'll do is go ahead and create our new method at the bottom of our class. All right, so in our method, what we're going to want to do is we're going to check which option was actually selected. Uh, so to do that, we'll use an if statement and we'll do this. If our selected battle menu option is equal to our battle menu options and we'll say fight first, 
then what we'll want to do is we'll want to hide our main battle menu and we'll want to go ahead and show the attack menu. So we're going to do this dot hide main battle menu. We'll do this dot show monster attack submenu and we'll go ahead and return. Then what we'll want to do is we're going to go ahead and do our other options. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do if we are selecting item, we'll want to go to our item menu. So I'm just going to add a to do and we'll go ahead and do return. And then what we'll also do is just copy that, paste that twice. And let's go ahead and add our switch and our flea. So then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and actually let's pull out this hide battle menu and we're going to place that at the top before we do our if statements, uh, mainly because uh, in all of our cases, we're going to want to hide our main menu and then do something else. And then finally, what we'll do is we're just going to use our exhaustive guard util function to make sure we covered all of our options. And so we'll do this dot selected battle menu option. All right, so now that we have the logic in place for knowing when a particular menu option is selected, what we want to do is after the player selects an option, we want to go ahead and display text tied to that option. And then likewise, if they choose an attack, we're going to want to say your monster attacked. And then what we'll want to do in all those scenarios is we're going to want to wait for the player to uh, interact with the game and then only then go back to the main menu. And so then that way we give the player time to read whatever text we want to show them. And then that way later on we can do things like animate the text and then wait for the player to provide input when it's fully animated. And so to do this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to update our, our battle uh, text game object line one uh, with the text that we want to show. And then we'll, what we'll need is some type of trigger to know that we're waiting for the player to provide input. And then that way in our handle player input method, uh, if we know we're waiting for player input, then we know we need to do some type of action. And so uh, a good way to do this is to provide a callback. So when we set our text, we can also provide a callback function for what we want to do. Um, so and this would allow us to provide the functionality to switch back to our main battle menu here. Um, so to do that, uh, what we need to do is first we need to add some new properties to our class to keep track of all of that. And so the first one we're going to want to do is we're going to want to track an array of strings. And this will be the text we want to show to the player. And so the reason we want to do an array is so then that way later on, uh, we can support sending just one message or multiple messages. Uh, so if you can imagine when a battle starts, we're going to say, hey, a wild monster appeared. Uh, and then we're going to hit OK. And then we'll say, go our monster We'll hit OK, and then we'll actually say, what should Iguan and Ignite do? Uh, likewise, if a monster had an attack that attacks for more than one time, um, uh, so maybe like a slash attack that attacks three times, we might say attack one hits, attack two misses, and we just want to be able to chain these messages and have a mechanism to do so. Uh, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do an array right out of the gate. Uh, so for our property name, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do queued info. So we're going to do queued info panel messages. And then what we'll do is we're going to need a property for that callback I mentioned. Uh, so we'll do queued info panel callback. And then we're going to need a Boolean to track uh, if we're waiting for player input. And then what we're going to do is for our types, I'm just going to copy this line here. And so for our uh, info pane messages, uh, what we want to do is we'll do an array. Uh, so there's a few ways to do this. We could do an array and then inside here we can provide the type. Uh, or what we can do is just have a string and this would also represent an array. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And we'll paste it twice. Uh, so for waiting player input, that's just going to be a Boolean. And then for our callback, uh, this is going to be a function. So we're going to go ahead and use our fat arrow. And we're going to have a return type of void. Uh, so 
uh, for these functions, uh, we're not expecting them to return anything. And because it is uh, an optional callback, we're also going to allow this type to be undefined um, since we're not going to require it. So then what we need to do is in our constructor, let's we'll go ahead and add in our default values. So for our queued uh, info pin callback, we'll set that to undefined. For our queued uh, messages, we're gonna set that to an empty array. And then for waiting for player input, uh, we'll set that to false, because at the start, we don't need to uh, wait for them to do anything. All right, so now that we have our properties, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add in some uh, methods to handle this logic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new public method that's going to allow us to set the messages and the callback that we would like to use. Uh, so the reason we're going to do a public method is so then that way from our battle scene, uh, we'll be able to update the text here. Um, so then that way in our battle scene, that's where we're going to have our state machine for handling our various battle states. And we'll want to be able to update the text in this component from that uh, class. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new public method. Uh, so we're going to call this update info pane messages and wait for input. Uh, so we're going to expect our array of messages, uh, so our array of strings, and then an optional callback um, if they want to if we want to provide one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to update our messages to be equal to the messages argument that was provided. Then we'll go ahead and do our queued callback and we'll also set that to callback. And then real quick, we're just going to go ahead and add our js.comments so we can have our types. Uh, so for messages, this will just be a string array. And then for callback, we'll go ahead and do our fat arrow function with a return type of void. And then if we want to show that this is optional, what we can do is if we put brackets around it, um, that's going to tell um, that's going to tell the JS doc and our types that this is an optional thing we don't need to provide. All right, so now that we have our properties updated to a value we provide, what we need to do is we need to add logic to go ahead and display a message from this queue. Um, and so to do that, we're going to go ahead and add a new private method. And the reason for that is this method is going to be called multiple times. Uh, so what we want to do in this method is we're going to check our queue. If there's a message, we're going to grab that first message and display it to the player and then wait for them to interact with the game. If there is no messages, then what we want to do is go ahead and call that callback if it exists. And so what we'll do is in our handle player input method, we're gonna go ahead and check if we're waiting for player input and if there's a callback, and then if there is, we'll call this method again, so then that way we can display the next message or call our callback. Uh, so to do that, we're gonna go ahead and add our new private methods. We're gonna do update info pane with message, and then we're gonna go ahead and create that method. So we'll add our private method, and then so in here, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say we're not waiting for player input. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and reset that. And then we're going to go ahead and reference our battle text game object line one. And we'll set our text to an empty string. And we'll go ahead and update our alpha. And we'll set it to one. All right, so the reason we're resetting both of these is down the road, uh, we're going to go ahead and add functionality to go ahead and animate our text. Uh, so as you can imagine, animating our text when we display it uh, can take some time. And what we'll want to do is display an empty string. And then as the animation is playing out, we'll update our string with the characters of our message that we want to display. Uh, so that's why we're going to go ahead and reset this to an empty text instead of just the message we want to display currently. So then what we're going to want to do is we're going to check if all messages have been displayed from the queue and call the callback. So it, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have some messages. So we have something to show the player. So we're going to check our queued messages. And if the length is set equal to zero, 
All right, and so if we have no messages, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and return early uh, since there'll be no text displayed to the player. But what we want to do is we also want to check to see if we have that callback. So we're going to check for our queued info pane callback. If it exists, we're going to go ahead and invoke it. And then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and set it to undefined after we call that method. And then, then that way we only call this method one time. All right, so if we do have messages, uh, what we'll want to do is grab the first one from our array and remove it. Uh, so we're going to do get first message from Q and animate message. And so we're going to store this in a variable. And then that way later on we can animate it. So we're going to do const our message to display will be equal to our queued info pane panel messages. And we're going to do shift. Uh, so the shift will go ahead and grab the first element of our array. It'll remove it and return that value. So then we can go ahead and do our battle text game object line one. And for the time being, we're just going to do set text and we'll set it to our message to display. And then we're going to go ahead and say, we're now waiting for player input. All right, so for the last uh, piece to connect all this together, we need to come up to our handle player input. Let's go ahead and get rid of our council log. All right, so then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to see if we are waiting for player input. And if we are, and if the player has pressed the OK or the cancel key. Uh, so um, if they press an arrow key, we, we don't want to go ahead and display our next message or call our callback. Uh, so we're going to restrict it to just those two keys. So we're going to do if it's cancel or input is equal to OK. Then what we'll do is we're going to call our update info pane with message uh, method. And we'll go ahead and return. All right, and so uh, what we're doing is uh, basically after we display a message to a player, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for them to interact with the game. And so by adding this logic here, when the player hits the OK button, then what we'll do is we're gonna come back to our method and we would grab the next message from our queue and display if it exists. If not, then we would go ahead and call our callback or we would go ahead and resense they were no longer waiting for player input. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, so as a reminder, uh, there is a link in the description of this video to the complete source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in this series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.